J. Patrick Cormack, assassin who went rogue and hunted down his former colleagues, essentially ushering in a new Templar rule over the colonies, before moving on to bigger and better things assumingly after stealing Ezio's box from Charles Dorian. But what if he'd never switched allegiances? What if Shay had stayed with the Brotherhood after what happened in Portugal? What happened in Haiti happened in Portugal! In this video, we're going to explore the possibilities of what might have happened to the Assassin's Creed universe had Shay remained an assassin. The moment that shifted Shay's allegiance for me was when he returned from Portugal. He was furious at what the assassins had made him do. If instead of getting angry back, Achilles had sat down with Shay and asked him to recount his entire experience, things may have changed. Shay would have explained to Achilles everything that happened within the temple, the artifact, and the tragic events that followed. Thousands dead thanks to the manuscript. Achilles would look down, feeling saddened by this news, and take full responsibility. This would cause Shay to retain some respect for the mentor and his other allies. A meeting would be called with all the members of the Brotherhood to discuss next steps, precautions that must be made so another may never step foot in one of these temples and disturb the nature of the planet. They sent pigeons to all of the various mentors in areas of the world, telling of Shay's story and that the seismic temples must never be disturbed. During this time, being 1756, Haytham was no longer in the colonies, as he'd taken time away after assuming he'd missed the trail for the Grand Temple in order to find his sister Jenny, who'd been sold as a concubine and was now working within Damascus. This meant that the Templar Order was without a proper leader for around two years, being 1756 to 1758. Charles Lee was left in charge, and so Achilles devised a plan in which they would dismantle the Order while Haytham was away. Several changes I should note is that Christopher Gist would be dead due to not having Shay to save him from his hanging. Shay would also still have the Morrigan, although his quartermaster would be Liam O'Brien in this situation. At this point in time, there were more assassins in the colonies than there were Templars. On one side, we had Shea Patrick Cormac, Achilles Davenport, Hope Jensen, Liam O'Brien, Cosego Wasse, Louis Joseph Gaultier, Robert Faulkner, Les Chasseurs, and Adewale. And on the other side, we had Charles Lee, William Johnson, Thomas Hickey, Benjamin Church, and John Pitcairn. The assassins had the upper hand in this situation, and all because Shea hadn't switched sides within the battle. The plan was set. It was time to lower the number of Templars before Haytham returned, if he ever was to return. Shay and Liam were sent to assassinate William Johnson, who was planning to take land from the natives. Hope and Kasega Wase were sent to find and kill Thomas Hickey, who spent most of his time drunk and did work for Haytham whenever he asked, just for a bit of extra coin. Louis Joseph and Rob Faulkner, along with Les Chasseurs, took to the seas to hunt down Benjamin Church, who was out at sea collecting supplies from the British in order to outfit them in the colonies. And finally, Adewale and Achilles went to kill John Pitcairn. If all of these plans went smoothly, they could work as one large assassin unit to take down Charles Lee, leaving Haytham completely open with no defences when he returned to the colonies. Each plan went down without a hitch. After all, these are well-trained assassins who'd honed their skills for years. Hickey was killed with a stab wound to the throat and died drowning in his own blood amongst tankards of ale. John Pitcairn was found dead in his own homestead, his throat cut and his bodyguards dead. William Johnson was a tricky one. There was a fight, but nothing Shay and Liam couldn't handle. One by one, his guards fell until they could finally reach William and silence him. Lastly, Benjamin Church sank with his ship to the bottom of the ocean, along with the supplies for the army that seek to oppress the colonies further. Everything had fallen into place. All that remained was Charles Lee. Charles Lee was well aware by this point that the assassins had succeeded in killing his allies, and with Haytham still gone and no way to contact him, he feared for his life. But Charles was no coward. He would honour Haytham by still fighting for the Templar Order. He was to finish his plans in the colonies as soon as possible, and then sail for London, England to wait the arrival of Haytham to address him with this information in person. The assassins had to act fast if they were going to stop Charles and take control of the colonies. They decided to stage a plan at the docks of Boston, where Charles' ship was docked. The Morrigan and Experto Creed were in the harbour in order to pursue if necessary, and the other assassins were lurking in the crowds around the docks. 
everything was in place. Now all that was left was to wait for Charles to arrive. After hours of waiting, Charles arrives at the docks, looking always about him in case of assassins who may have tailed him. The assassins didn't want to risk taking a bad shot at Charles and so waited for a chance to strike. Such a chance never came. Charles has hundreds of guards stationed at the docks and a direct attack would have drawn far too much attention. Instead, they retreated to their two ships, which waited for the assassins in the docks to tail Charles' ship and take him out at sea. As they sailed further out, they were amazed that Charles hadn't noticed them yet. But then on the horizon, they saw it, an ambush. Charles had planned it just for them. Needless to say, the assassins had clearly become complacent in their mission and overlooked this possible counterattack. 20 fully armed men of war sailed towards them. Mortar fire was upon them firing everywhere. The Morrigan and Experto Creed made evasive maneuvers to avoid this heavy fire raining down. Many crew were killed and thrown into the sea by the explosions which surrounded everything in the area. Charles didn't intend to waste his ships attacking the assassins, merely used them for a quick getaway. Once Charles was safely away, the men of war retreated, half following Charles' ship and the other half holding the line so no one was able to follow. Back at the homestead, it was right back to where they had started. It was a miracle none of the assassins had been killed, but Charles was clever and his intention was never to kill them, but simply ward them away. They knew Charles was headed for London, but how could they enter London without being killed? It had been in Templar control ever since Edward Kenway was murdered decades ago. They had to at least try. They managed to sail to England using the Aquila that Rob Faulkner captained. He took the Aquila elsewhere, waiting for word that they needed passage home. They took a carriage to London and found out from contacts that Charles Lee was at the old Kenway Manor, awaiting for Haytham to return. They snuck into the manor unseen. The place seemed unguarded. They crept through the old manor and found Charles. He was cornered and alone. His face showed his terror as he knew exactly what would befall him. Achilles addressed Charles, telling him that it was over. The Templars had lost and the assassins were victorious, as they should be. As he was speaking, a gunshot went off, followed by, well, that's quite enough out of you. The room felt as though it was moving in slow motion. Everyone had turned to the door to see Haytham standing with a smoking gun in his hand. Just in time, wouldn't you agree, Charles? Charles nodded, still in shock that he wasn't yet dead. Haytham walked through the room, over to Charles. None of the assassins dared raise their weapon, they weren't sure if there was more of a trap that lay ahead. Haytham looked down at Achilles' body on the ground. The bullet had shot straight through his head, killing him instantly, and pieces of him laid scattered around the manor's floor. Last time Haytham had been here, his father's corpse had laid on the same ground. He snapped himself out of it and back to reality. Haytham raised his sword and urged Charles to do the same. He was a man of honor and wasn't going to go out without a fight. Good luck to all of you. May the best man win, Haytham spoke. From within the crowd, I make my own luck, was heard as Shay stepped through, raising his sword with the other assassins. They then engaged the two Templars with their steel, blocking, attacking, and counter-attacking. Charles is well-trained, but not as well-trained as Haytham. He was almost effortlessly blocking the assassins. He cut down Hope, followed by Kasego Ase. But as each assassin fell, the Brotherhood just fought harder. Liam opened up a wound in Charles' leg, enough for Shay to go in for the strike, but he was cut by Haytham, who used his hidden blade to wound Shay's arm, and with his sword hand, cut down another of the assassins, this time Les Chasseurs. Running to his aid, Louis was also cut down by Charles this time, using all of his remaining strength in his attack. This left him wide open for Shay and Liam to both pierce his chest with their swords, while Adewale held back Haytham. Liam and Shay looked over at Adewale, who was holding back Haytham with his sword, their steel blades locked, and they exchanged looks at one another, both staring dead into each other's eyes. Your father would have been disappointed with you, boy, Adewale said sternly. I'd never fought beside a man with as much honor, kindness, and fierceness as Edward. You are the furthest possible from that man. This caused Haytham to lapse in concentration, in which he felt the same pain he had the day his father had died. Were the Templars not the correct cause? Was his entire life for nothing at all? Wasted on an ideology he was indoctrinated into by the same man who murdered his father? It was too late now. As he thought these things, he'd already felt the cold metal of Adewale's blade pierce his chest. He fell to the ground with a sword through his chest, the same way his father had died decades ago and slowly his life ebbed away at Adewale's feet. Adewale, Liam and Shay returned to the colony several days later with Rob Faulkner, feeling defeated despite their victory. Shay had watched decades of family and inner conflicts revolving around the Assassins and Templars played out within that manner. 
Edward, an assassin, Haytham, a Templar, and for what? What good could possibly come with this conflict? It seemed they were going around and round in circles. Shay's thoughts were stopped as there was a knock on the door of the Davenport homestead. He opened the door to find Adewale holding a baby he rescued from a fire in a nearby village of the Kanienkehaka. Shay asked who this child was, where his family was, what his name was. Adewale explained that his village was destroyed and that his entire village was killed and his mother died holding the child in her arms. However, the child had survived. They were too late to save anyone else, but they did what they could. Shay looked at the child and took it from Adewale. He said, we shall name him in honor of Achilles. His family lived in this homestead and he loved them dearly. Connor shall be his name and he will be trained as an assassin to uphold the beliefs of peace and freedom so that the destruction of his village may never happen to another and the Templars can never win. Thank you guys for watching this video. It took me a little while to write and it was a little bit longer than usual. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. Again, these are just my thoughts. There may have been some hiccups here, of course, not entirely perfect and true to the characters, just sort of my interpretation as a fan. Let me know other what ifs you'd like me to do by commenting down in the comment section below. Check out the other ones I've got on my channel. Uh, but again, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe to stay up to date, it'll really help me out. And I'll see you all next time.